Glutathione isn't the only antioxidant that positively impacts health. Others include alpha-lipoic acid, aline found in garlic, and sulforaphane found in broccoli. Now the common thread through each of these four antioxidants is that they contain sulfur. But there's another sulfur-containing antioxidant that may be as important or more important, and that antioxidant is called ergothionine. So uh, whether it's in its reduced form on the left or in its oxidized form on the right, we can see that it is a sulfur-containing antioxidant. Now, ergothionine has been called a longevity vitamin, in part because mammals don't synthesize ergothionine, uh, so we need to get it in the diet in order to have adequate amounts. So uh, why is it important? So first, uh, uh, ergothionine levels decline with age, and uh, their uh, lower levels of ergothionine are also associated with an increased incidence of uh, mild cognitive impairment. So let's have a look at that data. So first, ergothionine levels decline during aging. So we're looking at plasma levels of ergothionine on the y-axis plotted against age. And we can see the clear decline for ergothionine levels in plasma during aging. Now, lower ergothionine is also present in people who have mild cognitive impairment. So in subjects that had M MCI versus that were cognitively normal, we can see that the cognitively normal patients had higher levels of ergothionine on the y-axis when compared with people who had mild cognitive impairment. Now, other studies have also shown a similar, similar effect of uh, lower blood levels of ergothionine being associated with uh, cognitive impairment and also frailty in older adults. And that's what we can see here. So first, starting from, uh, with cognition, with cognitive, cognitively impaired in orange and cognitively normal in yellow, we can see that the cognitively normal people had relatively higher levels of ergothionine when compared with cognitive, cognitively impaired subjects. Now, similarly, uh, uh, for frail versus non-frail, we can see that people who were frail had lower levels of blood, uh, blood levels of ergothionine. Now, beyond associations uh, for ergothionine with cognitive function and frailty, are blood levels of ergothionine associated with uh, coronary artery disease, so atherosclerosis, and risk of death from cardiovascular disease and all causes? And that's what we can see here. So the uh, HR is the hazard ratio, and uh, that's risk for uh, the incidence of coronary artery, artery disease in, in red. And then the two different shades of green are mortality re related to CVD, cardiovascular disease, and all-cause mortality in the uh, other shade of green. And what we can see is that the median and CI confidence interval, interval are both below one for each of these three outcomes, which uh, uh, identifies an association for relatively higher levels of ergothionine with a lower incidence of having uh, atherosclerosis, coronary artery disease, and a risk of death is also reduced for uh, coronary, uh, 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 cardiovascular disease and all-cause mortality. So higher ergothionine, less uh, uh, risk for these three outcomes. So with that in mind, can and when considering that mammals don't produce ergothionine, can diet impact blood levels of ergothionine? So first, we need to know which foods contain uh, this antioxidant, ergothionine. So uh, this, that's what we're looking at here, ergothionine on the y-axis in milligrams of ergothionine per kilogram of food, and uh, that's a dry weight of the food. So uh, first we can see that oats and kidney beans contain relatively low amounts, around two milligrams per kilogram of their, these respective foods. Oat bran has about double or a little more than double than uh, oats and kidney beans. And then chicken liver has 10 times more ergothionine than oat bran. And then uh, tempeh has even more than chicken, uh, chicken liver, 201 milligrams per kilogram. But uh, what should be obvious is that the highest amounts of ergothionine on this chart are for mushrooms. So white button mushrooms and gray oyster mushrooms have 630 milligrams and 1.3 grams of uh, uh, ergothionine per kilogram of their dry weight. So uh, mushrooms are a rich source of ergothionine based on, on, on this study. Now another study looked at 15 different uh, species of mushroom and we can see that uh, seven of them have over 300 milligrams of ergothionine per kilogram uh, dry weight, which would again put them at the far right side of the, uh, of the chart. Now, also in that study, uh, they identified uh, decent amounts of ergothionine in garlic and also in uh, Mexican uh, asparagus, uh, which is the green as uh, asparagus that's normally sold in stores. Uh, and the reason I indicated uh, the, where it's from is because the uh, white asparagus contains significantly lower amounts of ergothionine, although I didn't, didn't indicate it on the chart. So uh, when considering that mushrooms are a rich source of ergothionine, do, does mushroom intake correlate with blood levels of ergothionine? And that's what we can see here, and it does. So we're looking at uh, whole blood 
levels of ergothionine on the y-axis plotted against uh, consumption of mushrooms in terms of times per month, and this is self-reported data. And we can see that people who reported eating more mushrooms had higher blood levels, significantly higher blood levels of ergothionine. So with that in mind, an obvious question should be, is mushroom intake in, uh, uh, reduced in the patients that had mild cognitive impairment? So uh, that's what we can see here, and uh, it wasn't. So uh, even though it looks like MCI patients had uh, less, when they uh, compared the statistics between the two groups, those that were, uh, co had mild cognitive impairment did not consume less mushrooms when compared with cognitively normal subjects. So if diet isn't responsible for the lower levels of ergothionine in uh, MCI patients, what other factors are contributing? And uh, it's important to note that gut bacteria make ergothionine. So which gut bacteria produce ergothionine? So in this study, they looked at uh, fecal levels of ergothionine, so the amount of ergothionine in poo, and then compared it against uh, 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 fecal amounts of uh, the bacterium lactob lactobacillus ruteri. And what we can see is that the higher the levels of lactobacillus ruteri uh, in, in poo, the higher the fecal levels of ergothionine. And this was a very strong correlation, as you can see by the correlation coefficient of 0.83, and it's uh, statistically significant. Now, uh, correlation doesn't equal causation. So, you know, th this just identifies a correlation for L. ruteri with uh, ergothionine levels, but uh, is there more direct evidence for L. ruteri actually producing er ergothionine? So that's what the authors of this study then uh, sought, uh, sought to do. And on the left, we're looking at uh, ergothionine. So this is a cell culture experiment where they uh, looked at uh, uh, lactobacillus ruteri in cell culture. So first, on the left, they measured ergothionine levels in uh, lactobacillus ruteri and in a bacterium that they didn't expect to have uh, ergothionine uh, E. coli. So uh, what we can see compared to, uh, for comparing these six different strains, all of them that start with JCM of lactobacillus ruteri when compared with E. coli, we can see that the lactobacillus ruteri have about threefold higher levels of ergothionine inside of them than E. coli. Now, just because lactobacillus ruteri have more ergothionine inside of them than E. coli doesn't mean that they'll release it out, out from, from, you know, from their bacterium. So uh, to test that uh, lactobacillus ruteri release it, they then measured the amount of, of ergothionine in the uh, supernatant of, of the cell culture, the cell culture medium. And so that's what we're looking at here on the right. So first, uh, note that uh, E. coli, for E. coli, there was no extracellular release of ergothionine. I mean, it's not, there's nothing there. But then for the six different strains of lactobacillus ruteri, all of the strains weren't equal in terms of their ability to release ergothionine into the cell media. Uh, so four of the six strains, uh, when compared with the negative control, GAM, uh, released uh, uh, decent amounts of ergothionine into the cell media. And actually note that for two of the lactobacillus strains, they released uh, four and uh, up to five-fold more ergothionine when compared with the negative control. So uh, with, when considering all of these data and that blood levels of ergothionine decline during aging, is this because of a dietary insufficiency, not eating enough ergothionine-rich foods, or an age-related decline for L. ruteri? So as a summary and a, a hypothesis of everything I've shown, so uh, if we eat more mushrooms or other ergothionine-rich foods, uh, we should expect to see higher blood levels of ergothionine and blood levels of ergothionine decline during aging. And if we increase our blood levels of ergothionine uh, based on the association data, we would expect to see a reduced risk for cognitive impairment, frailty, atherosclerosis, and uh, mortality from cardiovascular disease in all causes. Alternatively, um, or in addition to, if we supplement with L. ruteri, which produces ergothionine, or consume foods that increase its levels, including kefir, and uh, I've indicated the citation that uh, showed that, and I'll put all of the papers for the uh, video in the description. So if you're interested in the data, the published data, uh, just please check the description uh, for the video. Uh, so eat more mushrooms and or get more L. ruteri in the diet may be an important means for increasing blood ergothionine and for reducing risk for all of these uh, aging-related outcomes. Now, it's important to note that randomized controlled trials, RCTs, have yet to test this hypothesis. So uh, I'd stay tuned for the, for the data on ergothionine. Uh, it's, a, it's an emerging field, uh, so it'll be interesting to see how uh, the studies pan out. So that's all I've got for now. Uh, you can find me lots of places online, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, have a great day.